So I'm currently teaching at two different institutions and both of those institutions use Microsoft 365. So students all have Microsoft 365 accounts. And so one of the things I've been doing with my students is I've been encouraging them to be using the new Microsoft Edge browser. Not because I'm really particular about which browser I use. I actually switch between multiple different browsers for different reasons. But one of the main reasons I do is because of the integration in with the, they can use their account and they can integrate that account with their Edge browser. So for example, um, when they come to a new tab, they can have access to their Office 365, Microsoft 365 account. So that's just one of the things. The other thing is, is that I teach academic writing in both institutions and I want my students to be able to do research, online research, and be able to share that research with uh, maybe their fellow classmates or with me so that we can discuss what they're doing with their research, where they're going with their papers, or where they're going with their uh, different assignments. And one of the assignments I have at one of the institutions is students have to write a public policy memo. So for those who don't know public policy memo, essentially it's a very reduced type of text that is very targeted towards especially government agencies to try and provide them facts on a particular topic so that they can make decisions in regards to public policy. So um, I gave my students different topics and then I had them do some online research. Now I wanted them to do both uh, web-based research plus um, library research. Now because we're online that of course is web-based in a way but through our library system. So I wanted to demonstrate for them about how they could use Microsoft Edge to gather information and then share that information with me about what they found so far. So then we can kind of look at whether or not they're heading the right direction in regards to uh, the particular topic that they have. So I just chose a general topic of poverty in Canada just to give a demonstration here. And I did uh, some search, um, different searches in different areas. Uh, to show you um, different ways in which you can use collections within Edge. So for those who don't know what collections are, there's a button in your Edge browser that has this little plus in it, and it goes into collections. Collections is a place where you can store different things, really, mostly things like links. You can do text copied over, you can do images copied over, um, and you can also do memos and notes. So essentially it's a beefed up uh, bookmarking. But I'll show you some of the cool things you can do when you're doing research. So let me just go to the first one here. So this is the Government of Canada website from Stats to Canada. And this is about COVID-19 food insecurity. So um, this is a reputable site, obviously. So what I would like to do is I'm going to just highlight this particular paragraph here. I have two choices. One is I can right click on it and I can go add to collections and then choose a collection. So I don't have a collection started yet, so I can hit start new collection. The other way to do this, I'm gonna go over to my collections here and say start new collection here. I'm gonna name this one. So I'm gonna call this my name plus the topic. And this will be clear why I did that in a bit, but I'm gonna do that. And I'm going to highlight this. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag it over here and voila. Now I have the text over here. Now what's really interesting about this, if I open up a new tab, if I click on this, it actually loads that page for me. So I can see where it is. So there is, it's, it's referenced by the link, uh, but it also takes me directly to the page. So, so far so good. So that is one of the things I can do. I can actually go in and do more, like I could collect more information, and again, just put it over, drag it over, and again, every time, it makes sure it's linkable. So far, so good. The other thing I can do is if I really like a page, so for example, I'm going to go to um, this particular page here, and I can actually, this is a, a journal article, but this particular article is web-based. It doesn't have a PDF, which is a good thing for me. Um, I can actually, uh, again, highlight things and then take the highlighted area and I can click and drag it over here. And again, now it becomes linkable for that as well. But what if I wanna actually bookmark the whole page? So what I can also do is I can actually go in here and I can click on add current page and it puts a link directly to the, just the page. 
So I'm going to show you an example where that is later on of what I can do with that particular page as a bookmark. I'm going to go to the next one here. And this is an infographic put together by the Government of Canada. And it is on household food insecurity. I want to keep this. So I can actually click and drag this image over here. And there it is. Now it's also on my link. Notice I put it directly in the middle here, the stats can area. You can also drag these around if you want. So I could put it at the bottom of that one. So far, so good. All right. And again, it's clickable, so it takes you to the page. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a PDF. Now this is one of the places where the link part becomes best because this particular page, I can't copy text over and drag it over. I can't do that with a PDF. I can only do it with a web page itself. But I want to keep this page. So I could do the highlight just because Edge has built in annotation tools directly for PDF. I could do that in here, but then that would be saved locally to my computer. And again, I want to put this all together later on in one document. So what I can do is I can actually bookmark this page, add a current page, but notice it's really weird cryptic name. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say add note and I'm going to give it the name. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to actually take this and I'm going to add that to my note. So I call it Canadian Poverty Reduction Strategy. So at least I know what the name of it is now. So then I don't have this cryptic name. This one, it kept the name of the page, which was great. But this one doesn't because it's a PDF. Now, what I can also do is I can use sticky notes. So let's just say I wanted to keep this particular section here. I can right click and I can copy it. Then I can add a note. So I'm going to add my note below here, but I'm going to change the color because I use the colors to designate different things. So I'm going to use red in this case. Red just means it's related to the thing above it. And I'm just going to paste in that text. Um, and there we go. And I could add a new note or whatever to it. Notice the formatting is kind of out of whack, but that's typical coming from PDF. So I have my link with a note telling the title, but then a, a note below that with some of the text I have. Okay, so let's move on. So another problem that typically comes up is from a database. So if I'm using, say, Academic Search Complete, EBSCO database, and I try to use a PDF uh, article that I found in there, problem with that one is if it links this, it doesn't work. You need the permalink. So again, um, how do I do that? Well, that's where I use a different colored sticky note. So then I would use the yellow one. And this particular case, what I do is I grab the permalink, I copy the permalink, and I put that into my sticky note. Okay, so that way I have the link to this particular article. Um, and I can then, in here, I can actually, again, it's a sticky note. So before I did that, I could easily have put in the title of this. So I could say perceived barriers to healthcare. I could put that in here. There we go. So now I know what it is that I'm linking to. And again, if I wanted to, I could put more notes below this in red. That would be content from here. So using the color coding helps to be able to kind of distinguish what it is that I'm using the notes for. So there it is. Now I've collected a, a number of different things. And now what I want to do is I want to share this. Now I cannot share my collection as a collection, but I can share a document. So what I can do is I go up to the three dots here in the collection and I say send to Word and it does a little spinny spin thing. And then what it will do is it will create a document in my OneDrive that has all the information. So notice the name, Ethan Hall, Poverty in Canada. That's reason for that is I have my students do that. So then when they share the document, I know who it's coming from. So here it is here. It has the quote plus the link, it has the image plus the link. Um, and then it has here, here are the links that I gave you. And again, text and stuff like that. Notice that the it has a reference page. I tell my students to ignore it completely because the reference page is not normally correct. Um, it doesn't gather authors. Um, it just gathers uh, titles of things. So it doesn't always work that way, but at least it gathers enough information. Then later you can fiddle with it a little bit to make it better. One of the things that you can do is then I can share this document then. So then I could share it off with 
um, a student or myself or whoever it is that they need to share it with and we can look at the data together. So there it is. That is the general way in which I have my students use the collections within Microsoft Edge to be able to do some web research and then share that with their group mates, classmates or myself.